This is um, part of the contact for the Partners in Planning launch event um, and it's also a summary of an online learning module published by RTPI, details of which uh, we'll give you later on. So what is dementia and what is its impact? Dementia uh, is a, an umbrella term for a set of symptoms and is caused when the brain, the brain is damaged by diseases such as Alzheimer's or a series of strokes. Dementia can also make other physical impairments worse. Whilst dementia is most common in older people, some people experience young onset dementia. Two thirds of people living with the disease are women. It's important to remember that all types of dementia are progressive and everyone's experience of the disease is different. Having a partner or a family member with dementia can have a massive impact on everyone's lives. Please click on the link to see a video produced by the Alzheimer's Society which tells Linda's story of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. It took me about two years for my diagnosis. I had an MRI scanned and that's when it was definitely diagnosed as vascular dementia. I was in quite a low state of mind at that time because I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to talk to anybody about it. Um, and when you do talk to people, they want to start controlling your life and want to start doing things for you that you know you can still do. The consultant referred the Alzheimer's Society to, to me and they come and visit. They do art classes, they do the memory cafes, they do choir. And I, I did laugh because I felt, I said, I can't sing to save my life. I said, I've never sung, and I said, to art, I'm just no good at art, I can't even do a straight line, but she said, do come to the memory cafe, and that's how I started with the Alzheimer's group, and so I went to the choir, and I just loved it, I really, really loved it, even though I can't sing, I don't care now. <laughs> if you spend time with people with dementia, they not help you finish your sentence but they give you time to finish your sentence it's like a community and we give each other support as well as our carers i know that my husband as my supporter he gets a lot of care um, he knows where to go if there's a problem they make it it's like a, a safe haven for us i never think now why me I, I think well, I've got a better life now. I do much more through the, through the Alzheimer's Society. I do things I would never have done before. I've got much more, a higher quality of life now than what I would have had if I hadn't belonged to the Alzheimer's Society. It's not all doom and gloom. You know, a lot of us can live for quite a few years and have a really good quality of life. So just by having that knowledge will help us and f help people to, to remember that we're a person. Underneath all this, we're still a person. The impact of dementia. Research by the Alzheimer's Society has shown that there are around 850,000 people in the UK living with dementia. This is expected to rise to a million people by 2021 and 2 million people by 2051. The estimated cost of dementia to the UK economy is around £26 billion a year, with an estimated 25% of all hospital beds occupied by people with dementia in 2013. This is at a time of continuing pressures on resources and cuts to NHS and social care budgets. Most people with dementia say they would like to stay in their own home for as long as possible, However, they do go into residential care homes earlier because their own homes are not designed for them to live independently and can be difficult to adapt. 95% of housing is not fully accessible for older people and there are considerable challenges to retrofitting the existing housing stock. So what does this mean for how we and when we plan our towns? When we plan our new developments, villages, towns and cities, it's important to remember that uh, people work living with dementia uh, need to stay active, active physically, mentally and socially. 
but are all around 35% go out once a week and 10% go out once a month. The layout and accessibility of the local environment is very important to the quality of life of older people, and it can be enabling or, or disabling. Having access to amenities like local shops, doctors, post offices and banks within easy, safe and comfortable walking distances help people with dementia and, old, and older people to live independent and fulfilling lives for, for longer. Access to green space and nature has particular benefits for, benefits for people with dementia, including better mood, memory and communication, and improved communication. Unsurprisingly, environments that are viewed by people with dementia as, as accessible also tend to be easier to navigate and more pleasant for everyone. Age, disability and gender are protected characteristics covered by the Equality Act 2010. So, question one. List four effects dementia has on someone's health and quality of life. Here are the answers. They include memory loss, difficulties with thinking or problem solving, changing in mood or behaviour, sight and hearing loss, perceptions, sleep and nighttime disturbance, and anxiety and depression. Question two. Why is it important to address the issue of dementia in planning? Here are the answers, including the fact that there are, there are high rates of people living with dementia in the UK, and this is increasing. Um, the cost of dementia to the UK economy being £26 billion a year. Uh, the need to go into residential care homes um, and the increasing costs involved in this. Question three. How many people are predicted to be living with dementia by 2021? Is it 500,000, 5 million, or 1 million? There are 850,000 people living with dementia in 2016 in the UK, and this is predicted to rise to a million by 2021. Question four. More women than men are living with dementia. This is true or false? Two thirds of people who have dementia are women. So moving on, what does this mean for planning and planners? Scottish planning policy doesn't specifically mention dementia, but it does discuss the need for a generous supply of housing land and for a robust housing need and demand assessment. It also highlights the need to meet the needs of specific housing needs, including those for older people and people with disabilities. And it discusses the idea of the HND having an important role to play in this. Many planning departments and local authorities now make provision for healthy living and livability. However, in adopted local plans, there is so far little specific mention of dementia. Somewhere, somewhere that has made a commitment to this is Plymouth in the southwest of England, where the award winning Plymouth plan has a commitment to become a dementia friendly city by 2031. The area assessments and their subsequent updates will assess whether Plymouth's communities have access to the services they require, including enabling people with dementia to be able to live as normal a life as possible by ensuring that their needs are considered in all walks of life. Worcestershire in central England has gone a step further. Staff from the planning and health teams at Worcestershire County Council, working with planners and, and, and uh, South Worcestershire Councils, have developed planning for health supplementary planning guidance. This was adopted in September 2017 and provides guidance and planning for healthy developments. It's divided into nine health and wellbeing principles and gives specific advice to create, less, to create local areas that meet the needs of people living with dementia. So moving on to designing the local environment. The principles of good housing design for people living with dementia have been identified for many years. They include places that are safe and provide things like handrails and good lighting. They provide visual clues with clear signage and sight lines around the building. 
They have good interior design and avoid reflective surfaces and confusing patterns. Uh, they use age and culturally appropriate designs. They reduce noise through location and soundproofing as people with dementia can be hypersensitive to sound. They have good lighting uh, to deal with the fact that many people with dementia have visual impairments. And they have outside space given that daily exposure to daylight has been shown to improve health. The image of a living space, this is an image of a uh, living space in Hoigwijk in, in the Netherlands, which is a specially designed dementia village that is internationally recognised as best practice in dementia care. These have now been adapted for external design, and we should be creating places that are familiar, legible, distinctive, accessible, comfortable and safe. This list has been adapted from advice by Oxford Brookes University called Neighbourhoods for Life, Designing Dementia-Friendly Outdoors Environments. A familiar environment where the functions of places and buildings are obvious and any changes are small and incremental. The left-hand image shows good design with good signage, covered, a covered entrance and arrival, and you, and you can immediately tell this is a doctor's surgery. This is from Portsmouth in the southwest of England. The right-hand image uh, from North East London is bad design because the entrance is not obvious, windows look like doors, and there are no views into the building. Um, this health centre contains two different doctors' practices, uh, and the design, bad de design continues inside. A legible environment is one where we have a hierarchy of street types, short and fairly narrow, clear signs and decision points. The images here aren't to suggest that town planners and public health professionals should get involved in the design of traffic lights, but the series of photos show small scale design decisions and how they can have an impact on people. It used to be that the green man was in the traffic lights opposite, and this recently has been removed. It's now behind the man in photo two. Elsewhere, someone else has handed put up the sign to explain what to do. This isn't a design feature that only affects people with dementia, but others as well. A distinctive environment includes a variety of landmarks, architectural features and a variety of styles and materials, and practical features such as trees and street furniture. And again, the left-hand image shows good design with distinctive house frontages which aid navigation, and the fact that houses are painted different colours allows them to stand out as well, whereas the image on the right hand is bad design because all the houses look the same. An accessible environment includes one where land uses are mixed, or shops and services are five to ten minutes walk from, from housing, where entrances are obvious and conform to disabled access regulations. The left-hand photo shows good design with tradi a traditional high street with a range of local shops, which is the centre of a large village which is walkable for most of the most of the housing. Uh, and this is in Brosley in Shropshire, England. The right-hand photograph from Belfast, Northern Ireland, is bad design because it's not particularly obvious as to what the place is. A comfortable environment is one where open space is well defined, with toilets, seating, shelter and good lighting, and one where street clutter is minimal. The left-hand photo shows this good design with wide flat paths, traditional seating and a pleasant environment. And This is from Belfast in Northern Ireland. The right-hand photograph from Newcastle uh, shows bad design. It's, it's a very pretty place, but it's difficult to sit on and get, and get, up, up, get up out of. And uh, it can actually be quite frightening if, if you have dementia because the black flooring appears as a hole in the ground. And a safe environment is one where foot, footpaths are wide, flat and non-slip. And the development is orientated to avoid creating dark shadows or bright glare. The left-hand image demonstrates this good design with wide paths, little, cover, little clutter and street cover. Uh, and the right-hand photo shows bad design with haphazard parking, making it difficult to know where to walk and when it is safe to cross. Hoigwijk in Netherlands is seen as a world leading place for people living with dementia. It was opened in 2009 as a specially designed village with 23 houses for 152 people living with dementia. The residents all need nursing homes, facilities and live in houses differentiated by lifestyle. The residents manage their own households together with a dedicated team of staff. The video, if you click on the link, will show you how Hoigewick works and how people live there. So back to the quiz. Question five. Can you name three adjustments that can be made to a local area to meet the needs of people living with dementia? Here 
Here are just some of the answers, which include making sure people have access, uh, easy access to walk to shops and services and to green space and nature, that uh, functions of places and buildings are obvious, there's clear signage, there's a variety of landmarks and architectural features, and open space is well designed. Question six. Which of the following areas are suitable for someone living with dementia? The answers are on the screen and demonstrate some of the adjustments and principles which we've talked about already. So moving on, how do we best understand the needs of people living with dementia? To provide local environments that meet the needs of people living with dementia, you need to fully understand their views and needs. A simple approach is to, to walk the patch. As part of Belfast's role in the World Health Organization's Healthy Cities programme, the city has developed a walkability assessment for healthy, healthy ageing. It helps to gauge how accessible the built environment is for older people, and it demonstrates a way of talking to older people to understand how easy it is to walk around the city. As part of a pilot, eight walks were conducted, including two groups of residents living with dementia in supported housing. It identified barriers like a lack of seating, safe road crossing points, and also positive aspects including street connectivity and feeling safe, which can be used then to inform the future maintenance and development programmes. Another tool which you can use is the, the award-winning place standard, which has been developed by Scottish Government, NHS Health Scotland and Architecture and Design Scotland. And this helps people to talk about how they feel about the place. It's been used by many people, including local authorities, as a framework for consultation and development. However, it can easily be used by people with dementia and their carers to, ev to evaluate their local environment. It helps people to think about the physical elements of a place, such as building, space and transport links, as well as the social aspects, whether they feel they have a, a say in, in decision making. And the tool provides prompts for discussions, asking users to consider all the elements in place in a, met a methodical way. It also pinpoints the assets for place as well as how a place could improve. It can be used to improve consultation techniques and then feed them into providing more targeted provision of services and developments. The Bradford Face It Together group was a group which was led by people with dementia to provide feedback on signage and accessibility in a hospital refurbishment and in planning the Bradfield West Shopping Centre. It has published a guide on involving people with dementia uh, as members of the steering group and advisory groups and based on their experiences. So how can we work with partners to put all this into practice? Integrated and effective partnerships need to be developed with care and service providers, including town planners, social care, housing providers, NHS trusts and public health authorities. Also, organisations like Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Society have local groups and can provide support and advice. There's also a code of practice for dementia friendly communities which provides more detailed guidance and a structure around what dementia friendly looks like and what the key areas for action are. An Alzheimer's Society and Dementia Action Alliance run, run the Dementia Friendly Community Scheme where local communities publicly sign up to work towards becoming dementia friendly. They need to ensure the right local structures in place, focusing plans on a number of locally identified areas and developing a strong voice for people with dementia is key to this. And as part of all this work, 10 key characteristics of a dementia-friendly community have been, uh, have been identified, including how we can shape, you need to shape communities around the needs and aspirations of people living with dementia, alongside the views of their carers, how you need to challenge stigma and build understanding, how you have to make sure the community activities are accessible, how you need to acknowledge the potential that people with dementia can make to their communities, how early diagnosis and post-diagnostic diagnostic support is important. How you need to ensure there is practical support to enable engagement in community life. How you need to enable community-based solutions, have consistent and reliable travel options, have easy to navigate environments, and to ensure that businesses and services are respectable and responsive to the issues. One place where this partnership approach is working well is in Angus uh, in Scotland, where they bring about changes to the town that benefit the whole community. Angus Council is working in partnership with Historic Environment Scotland to fund a five-year 
Conservation Area Regeneration Scheme in Kirrimuir. During this time, a programme of work was undertaken to improve the built fabric and public realm. The regeneration scheme has been carried out alongside work being undertaken by the Dementia Friendly Kirrimuir Project. The Council has given planning permission for a change of use and approved the lease of derelict land in Kirrimuir to develop a dementia friendly garden with a rent of a pound a year. The garden will be safe, friendly outdoor space that people living with dementia as well as the local community can enjoy and help maintain. These projects have also reduced clutter within the public realm and provide a sympathetic, sympathetic approach to meeting the needs of both the holistic built environment and those living in the area, particularly people living with dementia. So to sum up in many ways, uh, click on the link to see a, a video which has been produced by Alzheimer's Society which gives you an idea of some of the small changes that can be done which can make a difference to those people living with dementia. Um, what? Shit, I, I've forgotten. Um, should I? Just, just go sit down. Just, just oh, go sit down. Yeah. Right. Chicken cheese. What? Chicken cheese. Um, sorry. Chick oh. People with dementia have experiences like this every day. A little bit of understanding, tolerance and patience can make all the difference. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, if you go into the seats just there, right. when we get there, I'll call you, okay? Okay, madam. I can't get, I can't get on. Oh. Let me help you. This way. Thank you. Can I have a look at that list? Yes. Chicken and cheese. Oh. Let's go this way. Thank you. Find out how to become dementia friendly. Contact Alzheimer's Society today. And now you should think about what you have to take forward. Think to yourself and ask yourself, what have you learned from the, uh, the presentation? But also think about what actions you need to uh, you need to promote, and that's actions for yourself, and actions also for your organisation you work with or organisations you're involved with.
And if you wish to find out more about Dementia and Town Planning, you can visit the link on the screen to find out more about the Dementia and Town Planning Practice Advice Note published by the RTPI and the online learning module, which is on the RTPI Learning website. Thank you.